Is, is there time? Yeah. Okay, go for it. So as you guys are leaders in your business, you know, you're making the um, events or whatnot, when you're doing something for the first time, how do you set yourself up for success to be that leader and to have that already mentality to be able to fill and step into those shoes? That's a really good question. Jess, you want to start? Sure. Yeah. Um, so a lot for me, a lot of it's a lot of the answers to these are kind of come back to mindset. I think that's something I've just worked so hard on the last few years. And um, you can also just affects your confidence so much. Like, I keep, I keep looking over at my husband, Al, over here, because I remember a specific conversation. I even brought this up at the summit. Um, I used to trail off quite, I used to be a hell of a lot less confident than I am right now. And sometimes it's a matter of, you know, just showing up and doing the thing and hyping yourself up. But I remember talking with Al one day, and he was like, you know, you trail off in your speech a lot. Um, what were you saying there? You don't sound very confident. Like, you're somebody in business, right? You want, your, <laughs> you want to get these clients, right? And I had a client that said to me the same thing one time. Um, so I honestly just started practicing in that way, in the way I communicated. But I would say something that I do these days when I'm starting something new still is another kind of brain trick. I will, like, journal kind of, like, a backwards gratitude practice. I will think about the thing. Y'all are nodding your heads. I think some other people here do this, too. Um, if I was like going to do the summit for the first time, I'd be like, I'm so glad I put together an awesome women entrepreneur summit with my friends and that, you know, 50 women sh showed up and now everybody's businesses are thriving and so many people are connecting with each other. I will write that down or say it out loud or <laughs> say it to somebody. Um, anything I can do to uh, honestly make my brain think I've already done it. Um, I love that future gratitude yeah. list practice. That's something that um, another podcast guest we had on the show, Jen Gottlieb. She she's an amazing um, mindset uh, just person. So if you haven't listened to her episode, just scroll back through and find her. But um, I, I feel like it's so important to. It's kind of like going back to what we were saying originally, like visualization and, and just showing gratitude for things that haven't yet happened, but really believing that they are or that they will. Um, to add on to the things that you mentioned, Kat, I feel like for me, one of the biggest things I've learned, especially I think over the last two years, is that it's okay to not have the answer, to not always be prepared. Um, I am a planner, so I like to know the details, but that doesn't mean that I always get to have the details. And I think the most important thing is I have, through practice, learned that every single opportunity is, every single experience is an opportunity to gather data, to collect information. I, I teach this to my team all the time, like when things don't go right, or maybe we make a projection and we completely miss it. I go, okay, that's fine, but let's look at the data and see like what is the story that this information is telling us. Because from that, we can gather something new. And I don't remember who said this, but I heard it one time at a conference and it's always stuck with me. And they said, you don't lose, you learn. And I think that's a really important, like, shift to have in realizing that even if something doesn't turn out the way that you wanted it to, you're not losing anything. You actually gain clarity, you gain wisdom. And sometimes the best things come out of realizing actually, oh, I don't want that, or I would never do that again. And you couldn't have gotten that lesson if you didn't go through the experience. And so looking at everything as an opportunity to collect data, realizing it's okay if you don't know the answer. And then also, um, I think something um, my friend Haley taught me that I just really love is she always says like everything is going to feel hard when it's new but that doesn't mean you're not capable it just because it's new right just like when you had to learn to walk and you had to learn to ride a bike when you went to school for the first time everything will feel hard when it's new but it has nothing to do with your ability as a person to do the thing it's just newness so that's that's my advice absolutely yeah every I've done so many hard things before. Yeah. I know everyone's heard the, heard the phrase, you can do hard things. And um, sometimes it's nice to, I've heard this other tip, just to add one more thing to that. Um, it's nice to keep a little proof jar. Mm -hmm. Don't you guys do this? Um, right, maybe, you know, go home and write down things um, that you have accomplished that you're proud of or that seemed hard at the time, but you did it anyways. And put them on a little piece of paper, put them in a jar, and whenever you're like, Oh my god, can I actually do this thing? And then just you know, draw something out of the jar and, oh, I did that. Draw another thing out. I did that too. And then kind of hyping yourself. Your past self is hyping your future self. 
I'm so glad you brought that up because so one of the things we do in um, in our company, one of our main experiences is the Pay to Create Live Challenge. I don't know if yeah. you, some of you have been part of it. It's essentially this like three day boot camp where we turn like people come in with just a rough idea, and by the end of the three days, they have an online course ready to sell their first paying students enrolled before they create a single lesson. So it's like kind of doing things the opposite way, like pre-selling before you actually create the thing. And one of the first assignments before they even get to start the challenge, um, our pre-challenge homework actually is exactly that. I make them go live <laughs> and I say, okay, this could be a 20 second live, this could be a two minute live, it doesn't matter. You just have to get on camera and share one time that you were able to help someone with something with your skills, your time, or you know something that you can provide outside of money. It can't be a monetary, so it can't be like, oh, I gave a $50 donation, but something that you did with your time and your skill set. And the reason I explained on the first day, the reason I have them do this practice is because sometimes you know we self-sabotage and we say, no, we can't do this, or I'm not capable, like who could I even possibly help? But I tell them, you literally have proved yourself wrong. Like you, you just told us a time that you were able to help someone, so don't ever doubt that you can help someone because I guarantee you sometime in your life you've been able to help someone in a positive way, regardless of whether it had to do with your business or not. So I love that you brought that up because I think it's so important. Yeah, it's really good.